TGIF and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Michael Hernandez and this is Freelance Friday, where I like to share everything I've learned as a freelance classical musician of the 21st century. Today I am reviewing two of the most popular online booking platforms, Geek Salad and Gig Masters. Is it worth your money? Is it worth your time? I'll be going deep and spilling the tea on these booking websites. So grab your notebook and get your ice venti coffee with extra ice and no classic and let's go. Hey guys, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, uh, I had a bad habit in the past of assuming things, and you know how I hate assumptions now. I started reflecting this week that I assume that everyone knows that we're in wedding season. I assume that people know how to book weddings. I assume that everyone knows what gig salad is. So then I thought, well, if I stopped assuming things, I would have so much material for Freelance Friday episodes. So I'm going to go with, you guys don't know anything. <laughs> so whether you know it or not, we are currently in wedding season. And a lot of people think that, well, weddings happen in the spring. And that's true, but um, there was a big pandemic. So I think they got postponed. Either way, last week, a few of my friends got married in an online virtual ceremony. And I thought, oh, right, weddings are still totally a thing. People want to get married no matter how sick you are. So this summer, you will probably see a lot more weddings, and I started reflecting on my own experience as a freelance musician. And I remember I did a lot of weddings, a lot of funerals, a lot of rehearsal dinners, a lot of engagement ceremonies. There's a story there. And I thought, I never deliberately sought out these gigs. I always used a booking platform such as Gig Salad or Gig Masters. One important note, Gig Masters is now called The Bash. They went through a rebranding uh, process last year or this year. So they are called The Bash. For the duration of this video, I will be referring to Gig Masters as The Bash. I just didn't want to use it in my opening because trying to fit Gig Salad and The Bash, it just seemed confusing. If I, if I use Gig Masters, most people know what I'm talking about or can figure it out, right? Gig Master, Bash, I don't know hoping they rethink this. But from now on, we are referring to Gig Masters as The Bash. So I will be reviewing Gig Salad and The Bash. Clear? Great. If any of you scroll through my Instagram grid, you'll see a variety of gigs in the past, and you might think, huh, I didn't know he did that. And the truth is, if it isn't a concerto, a solo performance, a quartet concert, a quartet concerto, a trio concert, or an orchestra gig, um, those found me. And how they found me were through online booking platforms such as Gig Salad or The Bash. From 2014 to 2018, I used these services. I want to tell you about them, and they were very helpful. As with everything, there are ups and downs, so we're just going to take those apart. Some of you might be asking, what is an online booking platform? And it's basically an online matchmaker site for event planners and performing artists. Somebody throwing a party will go to a site, a website like this and look for um, a performer. And those performers in this world are referred to as vendors. You have the vendor and the client. The client is the person throwing a party and the vendor is us. Let's say you're looking to throw a engagement party and you want to have a violinist. You will search for violinist in your area and you'll have a variety of people to choose from and some will list quotes, some won't. That's where the sites differ. And you contact that person through the website, and they contact you through the website. And you guys make a date, and you settle on a price, and that's how you hire your musician, and that's how the musician gets hired. Some of you might be asking, is this sort of online booking platform for me? And I think that that's a really easy question to answer. It's really for anybody. If you are moving to a new city, I love that example. If you're moving to a new city, this is definitely for you. If you are really just trying to gig a lot, this is for you. If you have a day job and you're not strictly a freelance artist, then this is for you. And if you are a very busy freelancer and you don't have time to do all of the bookings, almost like you need a manager, this is for you. Speaking of management, management is a completely different episode. If management interests you, I've had two managers and I've come to the conclusion that nobody will manage your career like you will. 
Um, so if management is something you'd like me to discuss, go ahead and write TGIF management in the comments below and I will make an episode about that. Belonging to one of these websites is kind of like having a manager for at least your, your gigs. And as we get deeper into this Freelance Friday series, you're going to realize that I refer to certain jobs as gigs and other jobs as concerts. To me, this is just my own thing, a gig is something that is outside of what I normally do. Like if you're looking through my Instagram and you're seeing um, quartet concertos, quartet concerts, trio performances, that's kind of like what I spend my time booking, orchestra gigs. I work hard booking those and that's kind of what I'm into. But orchestra gigs and concerti don't always pay the rent, right? So then I do a lot of gigs and that's that can be many things. Um, and I have to say, I haven't done so many gigs in, in the past year. I left, I stopped belonging to these services in 2018. But before that, I did a lot of gigs. Um, a lot of weddings, a lot of funerals, a lot of engagement ceremonies, a lot of corporate parties, uh, bar mitzvahs, brunches, bat mitzvahs, christenings, anything. And that's what's great about these websites because I would never go and deliberately seek out these opportunities. I don't even, I'm not even sure I would know how to seek out some of these gigs I got. <laughs> but you belong to this service and you get leads and your phone blows up and you either accept them or not. And believe it or not, I declined more gigs than I accepted, but I accepted a lot. So my point is you will get a lot of gigs out of it. It's just depend. It just depends on if you want to do them. What are reasons to turn down a gig? For me, I would turn down a gig if it required me to learn a bunch of music that I just didn't have time for. Sometimes I can, sometimes I need to learn up to 60 pieces in one month. So I like to take gigs that fit easily within my schedule. And because I don't steer too far away from the classical realm, that usually involves weddings and funerals. And the great thing about those is that they require the same repertoire. A lot of solo Bach, some somber melodies, <laughs> Philip Glass melodies I like playing, uh, Piazzolla, etudes, all unaccompanied, really easy peasy. And wedding stuff, people like the traditional wedding march, Here Comes the Bride, Pachelbel's Canon, and I have books with accompaniment for that, and of course I have accompaniment that can be printed out if there is a pianist or organist or what have you. So the types of gigs that I would take during this time in my life happen to be those. Funny story, there was one really weird trend in 2016 and 17 and 18 in San Francisco. I'd always be contacted by a guy that wanted to propose to his girlfriend. And the scenario was always the same. I would be busking somewhere in San Francisco, usually by the water, so it was usually freezing. And I would get there at, let's say, 8.30, and then 8.45, he was planning on proposing to his girlfriend. And I was to pretend like I'm busking. Big joke was that I was a busker. <laughs> I used I love busking. Another episode, if you want to know about busking, TGIF busk. What is busking? Busking is when you're playing on the street with your case open. And I started doing that when I was in college. I've done, I've busked in every major city in throughout the United States and Europe. I love it. I haven't done it in a while. I think the last time I busked was um, like two years ago in San Francisco. Anyways, I would be busking and then this couple would be strolling by after dinner and I'd be playing my usual either Bach or Piazzolla or whatever, Philip Glass. And then I would break into their, their song. Now, whatever that was. So that always required me to learn something I didn't know usually. Uh, like When a Man Loves a Woman was one. Um, talk dirty to me, <laughs> the, just that kind of stuff. So I would always have to find some way to morph into, you know, from, from Bach to like talk dirty to me or something. And then that person would be like, oh, it's our song. And then she would turn around and he would be on his knee. Now this is like a very specific scenario. And I'm telling you, I can't count how many of these gigs that I took. It got to the point where when people saw me busking, they knew what was happening. You know, San Francisco is not that big of a city. 
So when they would see me busking at nighttime by the water, they'd be like, oh shit, somebody's going to get, you know, somebody's getting married. So it would start drawing a crowd. Or it got to be that the girl would recognize me and she would like start like, oh my God, I'm going to get married. You know, it, it kind of faded out because it was so overdone. It was like, oh, that's the guy that plays for all those engagement ceremonies. It was great. Every time, you know, it was about 45 minutes of my time and I would usually make $300 each time. Show up, you know, play some of my favorite music and then play something I didn't know and then be out of there. That's an example of something you could expect to get on Gig Salad. Something, again, that I would never deliberately seek out. But if it was a slow week and something popped up on my phone, I would take it. Yeah. Let's talk about Gig Salad. As I already mentioned, I was a member of Gig Salad from 2014 to 2018. And for the most part, it worked out pretty well. Minus two times that were absolutely dreadful. That was my first experience and my last. Now both websites are very specific about how you deal with money and you can kind of only, you know, accept payments through the website. You can't give your phone number out. You can't have anything, any of your contact information on your profile, such as your website or your phone number or your email. Because theoretically, you know, an event planner could uh, find you on, on, let's say, the Gig Salad website. And if your phone number was listed, they could just contact you directly. And then you could move off of the website so that you don't have to pay the service fee to Gig Salad or Gig Masters or whoever it is. Your actions are really monitored. So what happens is when you get that notification, you can only respond through the app and it won't let you like type numbers in. Like if there were a lot of times where I would type something and it would block me from sending that text message back because it the the system picked up that I was trying to send my my contact information. So that was a bit of a hassle. The vendor or the event planner pays the service fee or you can split it. This was back in the day. I think things may have changed now. For example, when I was a member of Gig Salad, I never had to pay. It was a free, I had a free membership. And I think there are still people that were grandfathered into that. But now if you were wanting to join Gig Salad, you would have to pay either uh, for a three month plan or, or for a year. And they have two different options that you can pay for. Now the difference is when you pay for the membership, Gig Salad only takes 2.5% commission. When it was a free membership, they took 5%. Now, 5% is, uh, is what the bash takes. The first gig I had was kind of a bad experience because I didn't really look over all of the information too well, and it wasn't really laid out very clearly, I have to say, from Gig Salad. They take the deposit from the client, and then they would send a check to you. So I got a check for whatever the deposit was, which I think was the first half of what I was supposed to make. And then you would do the gig. And like any other gig, you're supposed to collect it in person. That must be made clear to the client. Somehow it wasn't made clear to me. All I knew is that there was a lot of fuss over taking money and being too direct with the client and you're supposed to go through the website. This was my first time and it was a funeral. So since I had already received a deposit from Gig Salad, I assumed that I would be receiving the rest of the money from Gig Salad. No, I was supposed to collect it at the funeral. Now, if anybody has seen that Friends episode where Monica is trying to get paid for catering that funeral, you can sympathize. You know, I don't like, you know, it's an awkward situation because they're grieving and then you're done playing, but the funeral's not over. You don't want to stay for a long time because then, you know, you're supposed to like eat and, you know, they'll always invite you to eat and sit down with these people that you don't really know. Everyone's super emotional and you just want to get out of there. But how do you get the payment? Whatever. I'm like, I don't have a problem with that. I just didn't realize I was supposed to do that. There's ways to do that. When I'm in control, I know what to expect so I can set it up how I like it. This was my first time working with Gig Salad. And I wanted to be very respectful, so I, again, assumed, was made to believe, maybe? It wasn't clear. Bottom line, it wasn't clear. So I left the gig right when I was done, and I didn't want to be, I didn't want to stay there, obviously. I didn't know any of these people. I had just moved to this city. And 
a week goes by and I'm not really getting the check that I was expecting from Gig Salad, so I contacted them and they were very slow to respond. And then when they did, they basically said, oh, well, you were supposed to collect directly. Well, I didn't know that. This guy, Tony, must have known that. So they were really not very helpful. I think they gave me his contact number, so I called this Tony guy who just lost his brother a lot. I was a pest, and I called and left messages, and he wrote me a really nice review on Gig Salad, but, you know, he didn't pay me what I had earned. And uh, I, at that point in my life, I had really, I really needed that money. I had just moved to California, and this was my first gig here. That, it, it took, I think that gig was in August, and I didn't get my payment until December. And Gig Salad was of no help for that. I, it was just me dealing directly with Tony. So at that point, it was okay for me to be calling Tony all the time. But before that, I wasn't allowed to call him. Okay. Then were, you know, three or four years of, like, really steady work, as steady as I wanted it to be, and no real problems. But it was very much like I would get notifications, I would accept or decline, I would show up, I knew the drill, I would make sure to take my money before I left. But very, but very little involvement from the actual company. It was really, you're on your own, and all the time, they were taking 5% off of every gig, which is kind of a lot for not really giving back anything other than matching me with these leads. But again, I was the musician, and I was ranking because of my reviews, and, um, okay. Then my last gig in the fall of 2018, it was supposed to be for an anniversary party. And I think the only thing I was supposed to do was learn this pop song, a saxophone solo in an 80s pop song that I had never heard. And if you've watched my previous videos, you know that I couldn't read music until I was out, almost out of high school. So I used to do everything by ear anyways. And most of these gigs, if it requires me to learn something, I just learn it on the way to the gig by listening to it, like on YouTube or, you know, whatever. And I was like, oh yeah, that's fine. I'll learn it, you know, whatever. And it was another easy, easy gig. I just had to drive there. I would have to drive there and just play this song. But the guy that hired me wanted to play piano with it. I thought, okay, whatever. So it was the day of the gig, and I remember coming here to practice. It was like mid-morning, and I thought, oh cool, I'll learn this song now. So I listened to it, fine. You know, but it was like a really um, intricate, improvised solo. Fine, you know, I learned it. Took, you know, I was practicing for a bit, I learned it. And I went and got dressed. It was almost time for me to leave and I got a call from the guy saying, oh, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned it, which he didn't, or else he wouldn't be calling an hour before the gig. But I'm not playing the piano part in the same key that the song is on the recording I sent you, which was like a video on YouTube. I, just, I thought, what? And this was like literally an hour before I was, I was about to leave my apartment. I thought, well, what key is it in? You know, and he didn't know because he wasn't really a musician. He was a surgeon. And um, he couldn't tell me what key it was in. So he tried, like, playing it over the voicemail on his piano. I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, I, there's no, there was literally no time for me to learn it at that point because I didn't know what key I was supposed to be in until I would show up. And that was, that was too stressful. So that was the only time I had to, like, cancel and typically, if you cancel a gig, you are supposed to pay back your deposit. But I didn't because I thought, you know, I already put the work into it and it was his fault. So therefore, I thought, I think I'm over this. Like, it was too much of a hassle in the first place. But those two negative experiences sandwich a really positive experience with the company. So take it or leave it. However, I will say that a negative for Gig Salad was the fact that it used they used to offer a free membership and they would take 5%, and now they don't offer that. If there were a number one reason for me to recommend Gig Salad would be because you wouldn't have to pay anything and I would say, you guys should just do it because it's free and you can try it. Now you you have to pay. I have students that are that got grandfathered in when I recommended that they join but they've actually gotten zero gigs out of it. 
And the way that works is if you're not paying, they really hide, they kind of hide your profile and they don't really try to find you gigs. So I don't really like that about Gig Salad. Plus, I never felt very, I never had like a relationship with anybody from that company. Like they weren't very hands-on, which is very different from The Bash. Gig Master slash The Bash was a completely different experience. From the moment whenever you join, and I say whenever because it was so different that I actually just rejoined recently because their customer service is off the charts. They're always willing to talk, which they send you a lot of information. They're super organized and they're on top of it. And every time I have a phone call with somebody from the bash, I'm immediately um, asked for a survey afterwards and how my experience was. It's clear that customer service is really important to the bash and they make you feel really taken care of and really safe and like you really um, are a client and you are because you are paying for the service. Prices are similar to what Gig Salad is now charging. Anything over $400, the bash takes 5% and anything under $400, they take $20 off flat. So. It's comparable, but at the same time, I really do believe you get what you pay for because you're getting a lot of attention. And like when you first join, you're pushed to the top, which is nice. So they're trying to get you gigs. Just in the last couple days, I've had so many email exchanges with the Bash and phone conversations. I've heard a lot of people compare the two and say that they make a lot more money with the Bash. I don't know if that's necessarily true. So now we are looking at the mobile version of Gig Salad, and we are going to compare the same performer on both platforms. Uh, notice we can see several of her photos and videos. Uh, this again is the mobile version of Gig Salad. Yep, nice photos. Okay, coming up is this overview, and this is the first time that you will read anything about this artist. The thing I don't like about the overview on Gig Salad is that you're only allowed 700 characters. That's not a lot. Um, and then right away you go into the reviews. So you don't have a whole lot of time to get to know who this person is. Then down there's booking info, where you might see some quotes, and then all of these services offered, she had to put those in herself. She had to choose each and every one of those. So not much to it. Okay, you see her name, her instrument. Let's go look at the same performer on the Bash website. Right away, her name pops to me a lot stronger. She's got some stars, obviously her videos and photos. I think that aspect is comparable. One thing I do like about Gig Salad is that you can put a direct link to your YouTube videos. You can't do that with the Bash. The About is really cool because it has to at least be 500 characters, but there is no limit. So she has a pretty lengthy bio, as do I, and that just gets you gives you a chance to know her right away. She's got some awards here, some quotes, reviews, and then it gives you her schedule, which I do like that feature. To me, this looks more like a polished website for an artist. And it could be a good alternative if you don't have your own website to belong to, to one of these. So just by looks alone, oh, here, this is important. She didn't have to choose any of those services offered. The Bash automatically opts you into all of those, which are like over 100 things that you would never think of. Um, you don't have to do any of that. They do it for you. You can opt out of those, however kids on the gig salad website i'm sorry not kids they are young adults that i teach at sjsu sorry guys so i'm looking up classical musicians in san jose and they appear at the top so that's pretty good uh the zelos quartet not a lot of information underneath their photo so i take back what i said about gig salad hiding their profile because they're appearing at the top they're the only ensemble in the area on gig salad so we click on them don't we yeah we do okay uh not a lot of anything here. <laughs> okay, we got some photos and we have some videos. That's nice. And again, I think that's comparable to the Bash. I do like that Gig Salad allows you to just put your YouTube links in. Again, we have the overview, not much information allowed. And then if you don't have reviews, you're kind of SOL. Booking info, okay, personnel. But this was interesting. What you're about to see, I had no control over. I would try to look at their bio, but I kept getting pushed into similar listings. There's our harp friend, who's probably paying a pretty penny. 
And every time I would try to look at their bio, I just kept getting shoved into similar listings. They are clearly trying to push these people to rank higher that are paying for the pro membership. Um, look, I had no control. Crazy. And this, I'm totally being serious. I wasn't expecting this. So even though they aren't hiding uh, these guys' uh, page, you are kind of being directed into hiring these professionals who are paying making these kids feel like they're not professionals, young adults. Yeah, so I did this for a while, and I kept trying to look at their bio, and then it would zoom up to this harpist that we've been stalking. (laughs) So now let's go look at um, me on the bash, since I just rejoined. Okay, so we're going to search classical musician. And look, I'm right at the top, because I'm new, so they're trying to find me leads. I think that's pretty great. And then in these little captions, everyone else, you see how you can see a lot more information right from the get-go before you even click on them. You get a little information on them, how how many bookings they've had. There's our harpist friend, and there's her trio, there's her quartet. So let's go to me. And right away, my name pops out to me. I see Dr. Michael Hernandez, classical saxophonist. Gosh, he's so attractive. Look at all, whoa, Freelance Fridays. Look at all these photos. Let's hire him. He's just devastatingly handsome. He wears blue jackets. That's amazing. Let's let's hire him. Um, and the about, you can see that there is not really a limit. I chose to go with a mix of quotes and a mini bio because I don't have any reviews yet because I am a new member now rejoining. Um, but you're allowed to do that because you have so much room. So I still get everything out of the way that I want people to know about. And then services, again, I chose none of these. Um And look how many. They just opt you in for everything. So I'm going to leave it to see what happens. And they're not trying to push the related profiles. If you want to find out about related profiles, you have to expand that. And I chose all of those. That allows me to choose who I want to be related to. So I chose the top five uh, classical musicians that were ranking in my area. That way people could just know what to expect. Students account, not really. I just wanted to gain access to their profile to see what they could do to uh, bump up their engagement on the inside and to see what it would cost to upgrade because it's been so long since I've been a member of Gig Salad. So I like that they are still eligible to add video and photos. They're not prevented. uh, So they could could add more if they wanted to, um, which is nice. I thought that maybe Gig Salad wouldn't let them add any because it was a free membership. I want to go to upgrade to see what the cost should be. So we see that the three month uh, upgrade to be a featured client is 169 and they are going to get higher visibility, access to phone numbers, and up to 20 uh, categories. So they do limit the amount of categories, unlike the Bash who just opts you in for all of the categories. Pro would be 139 for three months, and again, you're a little bit more limited, only 15 categories. Um, and then you see the free option listed down there, and that tells you what they're getting now and what I was getting for those four years. Um, low visibility, but even, I have to say, with low visibility, I did work a lot. But as you can see, you cannot click on that blue button, therefore you cannot add as a free member anymore. They were grandfathered into it. Now let's go look at the bash and see what it costs if you wanted to list your service. Excuse me. So we see that um, the, we're not looking at the annual, we're looking at the three month fee, which is down there. It's pretty comparable to gig salad. However, the only thing you're paying for with the bash is your travel radius. So like with the basic plan that I just got for three months, I'm allowed to travel with up to 100 miles. (laughs) And I think that the next one, you're able to go 500 miles, and then the last one, all over the United States and Canada. And to me, those just aren't worth it for these gigs. Maybe if you were a ventriloquist or a stand-up comedian, I guess guess that's being biased, but I just don't see myself traveling 500 miles for a funeral. To each his own. Just the amount of emails that I received from the Bash over the past few days. I mean, all of those blue talking heads, that's all them. They sent you nice welcome emails about how to finish your profile. And then right away, they started sending me different uh, blogs, like 10 ways to improve my listing, 10 ways to get booked, COVID-19 resources. So I clicked on them. I mean, there's a lot of information here. I haven't read through all of it. 
but they're not making it a secret. They want you to book gigs. Your top 10, your top questions surrounding COVID-19 answered. And these actually were really great. Um, I don't know if everyone has access to these, but you guys should do a search because it tells you about like how to prepare for a virtual performance, like basic stuff that I think is really great to know. I know it all, <laughs> but I mean, not everybody does. And again, I'm telling you guys to join like this, for example. And this is great because you will be walked through like every little thing, like how to act when you arrive, um, best practices for communicating with your client. All of these things would have been great for me to know walking into that first funeral with Gig Salad, like I mentioned earlier. Um, and that was just one email. So then I go back to my inbox and looking at another welcome email, they provide you with a checklist and some basic welcome information. It reminded me of when I first started working for Starbucks when I was in college, that you, you got all of this info and you were a partner and it was all branded really nicely and you felt like you were on the same team. See, look, this is all so much great information, not just for working through this website, but for anybody that's starting like a, a gigging career. And again, this is on my phone on this editing platform, and I just can't really read all of that. But I know what it, I know that it has a lot of good stuff in it. Again, things that uh, things to look out for, how to uh, rank higher, things that you can look for, why you might want to add more photos, the the proven you know statistics for people that add more videos to their profile. All in all, they want to make money off of you, and they are trying to help you make money and become more attractive to. Uh, prospective clients, right? And I think that's really great. And I, I do want to read through all of this because I think this is information that I might just copy and give to my own students because, like I said, it looks very attractive. It's all on brand with the bash. And it's super helpful. And again, you have that feeling that you aren't alone and that you're working for something larger than just go out there and give me my 5%, you know? And <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but that is the feeling that I got with Gig Salad. Which is why I've decided to rejoin with the Bash. And after their branding, their rebranding, I'm even more excited because this looks so much better um, than Gig Masters. So even though I'm not too crazy about the name, I do like the general vibe. And then we go and we see this checklist that they sent me of um, everything that you need to do before your first gig. And I thought that was really cool. And I might print that out and give that out to my kids too. I think that's super useful. And um, the other thing that's really great about the Bash is that they offer a referral program, which <laughs> I will totally be honest, I will put a link down there. So if anybody wants to join the Bash, if you use my referral code, I'll get like a kickback, which again is incentive to use their, use their platform and to tell your friends about it. I think that's really smart because freelance musicians have to be creative about how they make money. I think that that's a missed opportunity. I think Gig Salad should definitely do that. Again, I have to say that Gig Salad opted not to be a part of this episode, whereas The Bash sent me so much great information about their founding and even before I had decided to re-sign up. That actually, how they treated me when I was interviewing them for this episode was a, a deciding factor on why I rejoined. And how Gig Salad just ignored my emails and calls uh, was basically reminding me how Gig Salad is as a company. I hate to say it, but it's true. So those kinds of things do matter, believe it or not. So in conclusion, I think that belonging to one of these online uh, booking platforms is a good thing. I know for a fact that if you do, you will make money. It just depends on how much you're willing to spend and invest in your career. I would have loved to have been able to end this as I had planned, and that was going to be to recommend everyone join the Bash and Gig Salad. Pay for the basic Bash plan and sign up as a free member for Gig Salad. However, at the time I didn't realize that Gig Salad um, eliminated their free plan. So now you kind of have to choose, or you can or you can do both. There is value in belonging to both because you get more gigs if you can afford it. Especially now that both of them are set up for online and virtual events and that they are actively pursuing those events and still booking according to them, booking clients during this time. Do you have to say, if I had to pick one, I guess I would pick the Bash simply because their customer service is top notch and um, I feel like it's a good company to be with. So you'll still find my profile on the bash. Um, 
if you need anybody to play a wedding or if you want to propose to that someone special and you have some weird song you'd like for me to play, let me know in the comments below and I'll be there. I hope you found this information useful. As always, keep hitting me up with other ideas that you'd like to hear discussed on Freelance Friday. And until next time, take it easy and stay safe. Bye guys, see you next week.